I was supposed to get a haircut today. <laughs> Didn't happen. Nope. So we were gonna do it, but then it just things. So apologies if the lighting gets all <laughs> screwy. I don't see what's wrong with my hair. You wouldn't take your hat off. Why don't I go like this? Because you're awesome. <laughs> there, see. What? <laughs> Do you want me to put my hat back on the other way? Yes. <laughs> there. That's the honey one I know and love. Okay, questions. Questions. This one is epic. So I epic. 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 Epically look at it. Jesus Christ. And then this one's also long, but this one's longer. So do you want me to take it one? I guess so, yeah. Wow. I mean, sure. Okay. From empty one. Wondering if this is where questions go. Hi, I'm a fairly recent addict to your interesting and educational channel. So thank you. You're welcome. I have a 61380010, and I'm guessing that's a serial number. Uh, 049971. Yeah, so that's, that's, yeah, so that's the, it's, it's a yachtman, but it's not the 11, one one, it's the 10, which means it's Pacific, Pacific Rim area. Purchased by me in Hong Kong in the early 70s when I was in the Merchant Navy. Very cool. It was worn 24-7 for around five or six years, then sat in the pro proverbial drawer until recently. The glass is fairly scratched, but the case is surprisingly good. Not the original bracelet though, however, it does have a few problems. Seems to wind up with both shaking and winding and runs fairly well, so long as the chrono is stopped. Otherwise, it doesn't run long and seems to come to rest at just before the minute. The two subdials seem to be counting as does the day and date. Reset resets the sweep hand, but not the subdials. Sweep hand resets to 60 perfectly. Day and date increments by winding the time forwards, but not with the half out winder. Just spins freely and does nothing. The two buttons stick in and need a little assistance to come back out. It has never been surfaced or tampered with. That's why. I'm just wondering if it might be an economical repair or not. If my beneficiaries come across it when I pop my clogs, it would just get dumped as it is now, I guess. If it was a decent runner, they would probably hang on to it. Thank you for your time, Martin. Okay, that wasn't a lot of questions. It was just a story. Uh, first off, I want to say uh, I have a lot of respect for the merchant uh, for the merchant navy. Uh, the only merchant, the only person I've ever spoken to personally who saw uh, a, G a World War II German U-boat in action during a wolf pack was in the Merchant Marine. Uh, he he was actually at night. He saw he saw the the periscope come up, and when they were in a convoy going across to England, I just thought it was really interesting. Um, what you're describing, is, well, one, it's always great to hear from an original owner of one of these watches. Uh, you know, most of them have lost their history, so um, it's great that you still got it. The vast majority of stuff that you're describing, those are all things that would get addressed um, during the course of a servicing. The only question I would have, you say that the watch stops running if the chronograph is running when the hand hits 58. Um, so the big question is, does the entire watch stop or does just that hand stop and the watch keeps running? Because if the hand stops, but the hands, the hour and minute hands keep going, that means your chronograph wheel is bad. Uh, and that, that adds, that's, that would add a big chunk of money and make it a big, much bigger job. If it, if the whole thing stops, then that's an adjustment issue in and around the minute counter wheel. Um, but with the service, it's, Anything's possible, and even worst case scenario, something would can be done. Whether or not you want to leave it for your um, inheritors to to deal with, do you think they're interested in having a vintage Seiko sitting around? Were you thinking about the money for yourself? Do you want to be able to wear your old watch again? Is that what you're looking to do, or do you want to just have your your watch go to a good home? Uh, what I was just doing is is write me at, at kvw at kleinvintagewatchrepair dot com. That's kvw at kleinvintagewatchrepair dot com, and and we can talk some more. Okay. From Rustam Galivin. Uh hi Spencer and Sabrina. Thanks for another very interesting and fun video. Puppy is adorable. Some questions for the next episode. One. I bought a Lejeure 7000 chronograph with a Valjoux 7750 caliber that needs a new 
Auto Mining Rotor. The original is missing and a new crystal. Will any 7750 rotor fit this watch or they vary in shape and size depending on the watch brand and model? And where can I find a replacement crystal? eBay has nothing. You have one of these. Great watches. Um, is that why you've been wearing it? Because someone talked about it? Uh, no, I started, why did I start wearing this? I don't know, you stuck it under my nose. Well, I don't know, I was wearing it for some reason, I don't remember exactly what. I don't know, it's a nice watch, I really like it. I, it's one of my favorites. Normally I wear it on the bracelet, but I went and put it on this sort of custom taper that I, that I adapted for this. All 7750s have the same rotor. They might look slightly different, but they're all like this. There they are. This is a complete 7750 movement. All the winding weights are the same. Um, crystals. This is a generic crystal of the right size. I, honestly, I'm sorry, I don't remember what that size is. It's just a generic flat mineral crystal from the right size. The only thing that I did wrong is I got, I think, one millimeter, and it's supposed to be 1.5 millimeters thick, and so it's absolutely flush with the bezel top. It's supposed to stick up a little bit, but all these, these are just nylon rings, nylon, um, gaskets with a press-in flat-sided um, crystal. That's it. So you just need to, I, I just don't remember the diameter of that particular crystal off the top of my head, but yeah, you just get a generic crystal, boop, pop it in. And I like it flush like that. You do? Yeah. yeah. The original was up like, just like a hair, just I like, like a, that. a teeny tiny hair. I mean, I put it in and then I looked at the original and I was like, oh crap, it's the wrong thing, but I was like, oh well, whatever. Okay, second part is going to send a relatively rare Seiko 6139-7010 for servicing to my local watchmaker. Can't find a set of gaskets for this specific model. Is there another more common 6139 model with the exact same case? Maybe a 6010 or a 6015. Well, gaskets, most of, all the gaskets are, are general. The problem is, is that Seiko doesn't make them anymore. They discontinued all of them four or five years ago. Um, you can find new made gaskets uh, on eBay, and I was just thinking yesterday that I need to go through with your plan to have gaskets made. Yes, I've been telling him that for, like, years. Um, but the button <laughs> gaskets and the crown gaskets, those can be found. Case-back gaskets are, are they're very simple. That's just a generic 30.6-millimeter uh, um just flat. Uh, the crystal gaskets, Seiko created those crystal gaskets out of a different formula of rubber, and so they don't really degrade. Uh, the L gaskets are just, they, they just, they, they don't oxidize and turn hard or anything else. The Seiko specified procedure is that unless they're physically damaged, you can take those crystal gaskets, rinse them in isopropyl alcohol, allow it to air dry, and reuse them. And so that's a that's a great thing because a lot of the aftermarkets, frankly, they suck. Uh, but yes, I I put aside two. I put aside a button gasket, a genuine one, and a genuine crown. And I was going to send those off, and we can have those done because I also have found an, a genuine genuine sixty one uh, sixty one oh five crown seal. Like it came out of a, a crown that I rebuilt that I had uh, in just my supplies. I rebuilt it just to rebuild it, and the seal was perfect. And so it's a weird, it's a slightly weird size, so I want to send that off too. Okay, and somebody asked where he gets all his parts from. We answered that in another video, but it amounts to buying lots of crap. I, I buy, I, I, I'm much better now. I, I have <laughs> stopped doing it, but I have tens of thousands of parts. I can't even imagine. I have no idea how many parts I have. Um, next part of the question. I know you aren't into dress watches, but if you had to choose one among vintage Seikos, which one or two would it be? Thank you in advance. We were, I was talking about maybe selling, um, dress watches on the website, and if anybody thinks that's a good idea, you can tell us. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, I, I, I like dress watches, and back in the day, I used to love dress watches, and I actually went and picked out three dress watches uh, that all look pretty much the same, but I, I love them for different reasons, which is their cool movements. Two of these are the so-called Business A uh, watches. They were sort of the standard uh, Japanese salaryman's watch. This, let's see, 
Okay, so the first one, these are really crazy expensive. It's amazing how much people pay for these. This is a Seiko uh, 6218. Uh, I believe it's a 7000, but it's a, it's a 6218 week dater. These are 33 joules. It's the same basic movement as the 62 MAS. It's automatic and that kind of stuff. But they're just people just, they fight over these things. But it's just talk about a classic, 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 classic watch layout. I mean, it's just beautiful. And it's, of course, it's got the, the date on the side and the day below. And people just fight like maniacs over this. A lot of money. But if you want the same look, I could also go like this. And honestly, I think it has a much better movement. This is a 27 joule, eight, my brain, my brain just failed me. It's an eight, three, four, six. I was correct. I would have been correct. It's the same layout, right? It's a little smaller, but it's an eight, three, four, six. The thing about the eight, three, four, six is it was sort of a, um, an orphan movement that Seiko had in the mid late sixties. Um, but they're cool because they have, they have a Swiss style automatic winding, which has reverser wheels, um, versus the regular like magic lever thing that Seiko used, what this does is it makes it a lower stack height in the movement so that the watches are actually fairly slim. But they have their high beat, not high beat, they're um, hand winding, automatic winding, and they're just, they're super, super, super classy. Seiko moved this movement type to um, Citizen. So actually Citizen made this movement for a long time afterwards, but it was of course made by Citizen, not Seiko. This was made by Seiko. And it's the same layout. Note that it has that same business dash A layout. The last one, and really this is probably the one I really would like. And this one's really cool. This is the Sua King Seiko High Beat 5625. And that is just, isn't it beautiful? Isn't it, what a beautiful watch, huh? Isn't that nice? With this gold badge on the back, so elegant with its, it's sort of angled sides. Very cool. Why don't I actually, let's take a, a break and I will, um, I'll show you these three watches. Okay. How about that? Okay. So here are these three watches and you can see that they are visually very, very similar. It's, uh, they're classic examples of, of Seiko's grammar of design, you know, <clears throat> in every case they have, they have the dauphine hands, the, the pointy hands, and they have these stick markers. Very, very simple, very clean, classic. It's, it, they're designs that would look at home basically on everybody's wrist and would have no matter what decade they were being made and worn in from today all the way back to the 60s when they were made. Very, very simple, very clean, very stylish. And so it's just the the biggest variation really is is the is the um, is the technology. Uh, let's see now. None of these are serviced. None of these are serviced. This one I can't show you the movement because it is a um, it's a it's open through the front. It's a monocoque case. So I'm not going to open that one up. But we can look at the let's look at the six two one eight. And I'll open up the the eight three as well. And just one second. Oh, would you open up? Stop fighting me. So this watch lived a busy, busy life. And you can see it there. The gold text. Now, again, this is the same movement uh, as, the same basic movement as what's in the 62 MAS. One of Seiko's, Seiko's older movements. The, they are very solid. Um, I mean, they're solid, they're reliable. Even the 17 Joule model, the 6217, they're, they're very, very reliable. The biggest issues with these 6,000 series watches is that the, the whole, uh, like the, uh, the keyless works are just, they're kind of funky. They have an early style setting lever and they can get, they can get a thing where, um, cause they've got these strange intermixing sort of springs and levers and they can get weak. And then as you're trying to advance the time forward, you can feel the, the gears skipping, which is kind of a pain in the butt. But the, the movement itself, the movement family itself is excellent. And this one, of course, is 33 joules, so it's like darn near everything is jeweled. And they, I mean, like, even like the mainspring arbor, I mean, it's like it's, Seiko really went to the wall for this one. It's got the fine adjuster on it and everything else like that. They're great, great things. I need to, um, this one got serviced a lot. <laughs> but anyway, one of these days, I'm going to take the time, and I swear to goodness, I will 
service this watch. I've been meaning to. I've had this watch in my watch box waiting for that for that glorious day to come, but the day hasn't come yet. Now the 62, I'm sorry, the 8346, which is what this is, gets them, is a completely different piece of business. Um, they're great, great movements though, and they came they had a number of um, different variations with this movement. Uh, it's it's sad that it's sort of a an orphan movement, and Seiko never did anything outside of dress watches with it. Like, this would have been a fantastic diver watch movement, except they just, they, they never went like that. They never used it. Very flat. Same one as, like, the, the, the uh, I don't know, it's just, isn't it beautiful? 27 jewels. Very, very flat. Highly jeweled movement. Very clean. I love saying very too much, don't I? It's a good design. It's got dia shock. It's, uh, gosh darn it. Hang on just one second. It's just, it's a clean design. These are kind of hairy to, um, service is the only thing. They're, they're, because they're so tightly built, they tend to be kind of a, kind of a bear to service, but they're, they will reward you. They're just, these are, these are just classic, lovely, dependable movements, and they're capable of, near chronometer accuracy. Seiko really did some good stuff with these. And they 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 had some and they had some the the eight three movements they had some really cool variants too. See if I can find one here for you. Like this. Ooh. This is one of the ones that people this is one of the models that people associate most with the eighty eight three ones. It's these you can believe this watch is entirely original. Isn't it amazing? Okay, but it's these are really cool. With these, they've got these bullet markers, right? And it looks like a non-loomed watch, but it is loomed. There are little loom pips on the end of every single one of these bullet markers, and the underneath of the under underside of the hands is loomed. So I actually went and re-loomed one once, and I went and uh, I think I still have it, but I am. Um, and so you could actually see it. And it's a little difficult to charge up the hand loom, but if you do it at night, it's pretty amazing because you get these little glowing coronas around the hour and the minute hands. And the little loom pips on the ends of these things sort of refract off the inside of the crystal, and they sort of have this multi-look to them. Very cool. Very cool. That's a, It's got a sea line in case back. That's a really neat watch. I should restore that. Can you believe this is unrestored? Unrestored. Can you believe it? What a watch with this lovely sort of almost like a little bit of periwinkle blue. And again, A346, fantastic dress movements. Um, I wish Seiko had made a diver with them, but they didn't. I don't know. What are you going to do? Okay. Well, anyway, let's get back to it. Hey, Spencer, since you mentioned it, how come you aren't active on online watch forums anymore? Toxicity, drama. Yeah, we met on a message board and spent lots of time on message boards. And while they can be fun, you can meet your person on it. There's lots of bad apples that ruin all the fun. It's uh, true. There's a lot of like big fish, small ponds, guys that want to throw their weight around or tell you what to do and that kind of stuff. And a lot of the a lot of the old timers, especially at like Seiko Collector Watch Forum, they're just, I mean, they're like a... They're just, there's, a, there's a lot of good people on there, but there's some people who really run the, you know, try to really ride roughshod over everybody else, and they're just dicks. It's a waste of my time. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that I miss speaking to, but a lot of the people, the ones that I care about the most, I talk to outside of watch forums. So, I don't know. It, there's not enough time in the day. Anyway. There is not enough time in the day. I mean, I, I, I never have enough time in the day. It's ridiculous. You say you don't even really post on Reddit. I have two. I I have two watch subreddits. Did I just interrupt you? No. No. I have two watch subreddits on Reddit. I have Japanese watches and Seiko. They're both mine. I haven't posted on either one in. I have no idea. Very long time. I just don't have. I I, I haven't made it a priority. Let me put it that way. And there's just the benefits do not outweigh the negatives. And it's not like you know. I'm going to go out and hang out in a place, like a real world place, like some coffee house with 
people who are jerks. I just, there's no point. I'm not going to do it. So there's just toxic stuff in any online specialist community and watches are no different. Neither are Star Trek forms. <laughs> they're their own kind of crazy. Oh, they're the worst. <laughs> Basically, all fan bases suck. Every Everything that has a fan base is terrible. I don't know how to, what to say. I'll just go to the next question. Okay, these are the ones you sent me, and I don't know what they came from. I read that one, and I was like, what? I, I, I okay, just... Re- from Anonymous. Grand, Anonymous. Grand Seiko spring drives are better than Rolex. That's a brave statement from someone whose name is Anonymous. <laughs> um, Why are you so offended? <laughs> it's just what a stupid thing to say. What a stupid thing to say. It's like somebody the other day oh, got on my web, oh, got on the YouTube comments and was like, Seiko is trash. Those Rolexes, the, even those Rolexes, yours aren't that great. And he was talking about some other, he was some jackassery. Oh, I had on the next door thing and somebody was like, does anybody know who could fix my my watch, um, and, uh, and that isn't expensive, and I was like, okay, well... It was a World War II Benner's. No, World War One. World War One Benner's. Anyway, and I asked him what he had, and he messaged me, and I said, okay, I'm sorry, we don't work on those, we work on Seiko's, and I... Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, and then he got all pissy, and he was, like, saying I was insulting him and his watch, and that Seiko's are garbage, and I was like, okay, and then I deleted my account because... I don't care. <laughs> There's this wonder, talking about toxic people in a collecting s- situation, This, and I'm sure all of you have run into these kinds of people more than a few times, the people that are exceptionally opinionated while also being exceptionally ignorant. So you have somebody who's ignorant and opinionated, they have a big mouth, and, they have, and they're willing to give their opinion about something they know jack about. Um... So, and they're mean about it. Why are, do they have to be so mean? Please don't be mean. It's don't not, be. It's not nice. It doesn't work. Okay, but to address this question, that spring drive is better than Rolex. They're utterly different technologies. Utterly, utterly different technologies. Completely different approach to uh, horology. Um, different, different manufacturing. Different designs. Completely. I mean, the spring drive is essentially a quartz watch with a mechanical regulator. That's what they are. Rolex is a is a almost more is is almost like a pocket the the classic Rolex like the fifteen seventy movements the Submariners and stuff there it's basically pocket watch technology totally totally different pieces of business and I would say we haven't spring drives are neat I have no idea what their longevity is um, nobody can service them except Seiko in Japan which so woo um, uh, so that why. Because Seiko hates everyone and everything. Wait, but that's, why can't you service one? Like, why? Where would I get the spare parts? I don't know. You have 10,000 spare parts over somewhere. Yeah, but no, all this modern new stuff Seiko won't won't do, won't let anybody, as far as I know. Maybe authorized dealers can do it, but I wouldn't be able to. But, like, okay, so, like, those things, they have a constantly rotating, it's not a balance. It's like a regulator. But it looks like a balance, but it spins constantly, and the automatic weight goes around and it winds um, the mainspring that drives that, and it also some of the mechanical power is pulled off and turned into um, battery power, which is used to regulate the wheel as it turns. It's it's a it's an amazing a, a way to address uh, timekeeping, but absolutely different than Rolex. You're you're talking apples and Winnebagos, completely different pieces of business. But uh, those kind of blanket statements, blankets are Rolex is garbage, Seiko is garbage. Don't waste my time with that stuff. Okay. Um, well, because it's a thought-stopping statement. It's not about discussion. It's about stating something, walking away, throwing down your mic, smashing your glass on the floor. <laughs> From Justin Walsh. Uh, um, this was one you got. I don't know what he's talking about. I do. What specifically would you recommend applying to the silver part of the bezel for protection? I have a bezel in just as good condition and don't want to wear it until applying something. Okay, so what he is asking about is the Seiko uh, 6041, 6139, 6041. It was, it's now it's a little known variant, and forgive me, this is just the case, because the interior is gone. Um, 
This is just the case. It's a 6139. These had like a black dial and an, also an orange dial. That watch your brother has. With the orange dial. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what would have gone in here. Uh, but anyway, this is the one time when Seiko's quality control failed them. Instead of being like a Pepsi, like the 6139 or a Coke, like this 6139, 6030Xs, this one, these numbers up here would have been white, white on silver. And Seiko, for some reason, screwed up. And these, Jonathan Koch used to talk to me about these, because he remember when they were new, because he worked in a jewelry store then. And he said people were coming back in a couple of weeks after the watches were brand new with these white numbers gone. And he's like, and all of the spares were exhausted. He said very quickly, you couldn't get them anymore. And then the watches just vanished. You very rarely see these watches. What I've done in the past and what I did with that watch, specifically after consulting with the owner and running over different options, we clear-coated, I clear-coated that ring just by itself using Damar varnish which is uh, a natural varnish that's used for oil paints, oil paintings. Uh, and it's something, it gets very hard over time. Um, and it's also, it, it adheres very strongly. I didn't want to have to like scuff up the surface, obviously. And that's what we tried. And I, I haven't heard back from that gentleman to see how that lasted, but that's that's what I ended up doing. Is I used Damar varnish because uh, it, it that stuff gets really hard, but it's the only time Seiko ever screwed up. It's the only time they ever tried this. And that's why you get that blank silver thing right there. Milo! Milo's yelling at us. So what's up? Uh, from the O1T, is it now fully water resistant? He was asking about a 6105 that I restored for somebody. A 6105-8110 diver. I have no idea if it's fully water resistant because I would never in a million years take any 6105 anywhere near water for any reason whatsoever, period. Um... They may, it, it should be. I mean, the ceiling surfaces were good. All the seals were new. The crown was rebuilt. Um, the thing with 6105s, though, like a, they're just, they're almost all of their value is bound up in the loom condition. And so if you have original loom, good original Seiko loom, including like the hands, all the hands, the sweep hand, it's just, it's, it's, it's irreplaceable. And if any moisture gets inside, even on the level of humidity, uh, that can be ruined in an afternoon. Is it worth it to take it into water? What seals are for, in my world, seals are for dust exclusion. They are for keeping the internal atmosphere consistent. They're for keeping the lubrication from outgassing and the, keeping the lubrication where it's supposed to be and uncontaminated. That's really what seals are for. And for, we hope they never have to be tested, for emergencies. Uh, you don't I mean, a watch like that, I mean, somebody who takes an original 6105 with original loom and says, okay, I've got new seals, and they go swimming with it, I just, I can't imagine the the thinking behind that, but that's that's me. So it may well be resistant, but um, I'd never test it, and I would never recommend testing it. What? Was there anything else? Uh, I wanted to say thank you for everybody that said nice things about Rocket. Um, He's so much bigger. Yeah, we think he was super malnourished because now he's gigantic. Because, again, he was found somewhere in the scrubland of Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried crate, crating him, and I don't know what I'm doing. So what he does for sleeping is he sleeps on the floor by him. On a special pillow. On a special pillow next to the heater. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he still wakes up once at, like, 2 in the morning to go to the bathroom, and then he wakes up at... 5, 5.30. But he, he got trained, yeah. bathroom trained really quickly. Mm -hmm. So, getting yeah, up no, sucks, but whatever. He's just super rambunctious, and uh, his, the, the we think um, lab side is coming out, he's eating everything. I got a DNA test thing, though, so when I get the results, I will let everybody know what it is. When are we going to get Milo DNA tested? I can. They'll say, it'll come back and it'll just be a single piece of paper, and in the middle it'll say cat. <laughs> cat. <laughs> um... Um, the next thing is we have an announcement that you are no longer going to... We had, we had, I, 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 I always have to be careful about what I'm doing. So I had started selling things for people on, by commission on the website. And I'll, I'll do it every now and then. And mostly I've been doing it for people I've known for a long time. And it's just sort of as a favor. Um, but then people have been like, oh my God, please sell my stuff. And 
maybe I'm missing an opportunity. Maybe I'm missing a, a thing to like really make that go. Uh, we had been doing it and then we were doing it at a, for a commission of 20%. Uh, and it's not a bad idea, but it, we're just getting buried again. It takes up too much time. So, I mean, I'll take it on a case by case basis depending, but it's also part of the problem is, is people are sending me watches and they're saying, I want to get $950 for this watch. And I'm like, well, it's not worth $950. This is a $300 watch. Well, I want you to put it up for $950. You're not going to get 950 and it's just going to sit on the website forever, and I'm going to be responsible for your watch that will not sell. So if I do take any watches for sale, it's going to be, the pricing is going to be at my recommendation, and we're going to get 20% on that, but I'm not going to take very many watches. Uh, unless it's something truly special, or you and I are, like, tight, um, I'm going to try to avoid that. Okay, and the last thing is something that... I didn't exactly want to talk about, but I am going to talk about, which is that sometimes we run into a situation where people do not pay their bill. And um, it's kind of enraging and annoying. And I mean, you have a year to figure, you have a quote and a year to figure it out and you've been waiting for that long, please pay your bill. That would be great. We don't get a week to week paycheck. So, and this is how we put food on the table. and. It's really rude to not pay your bill. It's an unfortunate fact. I mean, look, I, I understand that re these restorations are, are, they're not, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not, um, they're, they're voluntary. It's not, they're, they're not an essential thing. And they can, they can add up to quite a, a good amount of money. But what seems to happen is that I will have, we'll have a train of people, two or three in a row, who, who just simply won't pay, and they just vanish off the face of the planet. Open a dialogue. Just tell me, hey, look, you know, look, I'm going to have, thank you for the bill, it's great, thank you, communicate with me, I'm going to need blank amount of time to get this done, uh, for whatever reason, whatever, just let me know what the heck is happening. Or you can say, hmm, my watch has been there for a while, maybe I should ask him where I am on the line. Which and people do. And then say, okay, can you push me back some so I can get money together? Right, and people do have done that in the past as well, even though I know they've waited so long to get their watches. It's tough, and I know that it's tough. It's just, if people people do this thing where they'll just vanish, and I don't hear from them, and I'm like, what's going on? So, you know, if you can, it's just, you know, everybody's got troubles, and so let's work together and get the darn thing done. What? Um, I am going to have a week odds and ends video. I've already filmed a few segments for it. Uh, so definitely look for that. And, uh, and that's, that's really about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was there anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. No more. Um, yeah. Next time we have a video, I'll show you when we get back the DNA test, you'll get to see rocket and you'll see how much bigger he is. He's bigger. He's much bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, folks. Thank you very much. Bye. Next time you see me, mm -hmm. I'll have less hair. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Um, I did say that there is going to be a week of odds and ends video, and one of the things I'm going to talk about is this, um, and what this is for, and why I made this. I actually made this out of a giant bar of, of uh, mild steel. I made this by hand. It's still rough, and I'm still roughing it in, but this is going to be part of my sort of hobby project that I'm dealing with that does, has nothing to do with time. Anyway, this was a lot of fun, literally making this thing by hand, all hand tools, machine, hand working this down from a giant hunk of iron. That was a lot of fun. Anyway, but it's getting there. Needs a little bit more work, and that's going to go away. I haven't quite figured out how that hole's going to go away, but if anybody has an idea about what this is, you can speculate, because I know what this is, but I understand it's sort of a weird item. But that's going to be fun. We'll talk about it more this weekend. Okay.